The World Baseball Classic is an international baseball tournament that was introduced in 2006 that showcases baseball stars from around the world representing their countries and competing for a true world championship. The tournament is set to be held for the fifth time in just about a month in March of 2023. The anticipation for this year's event got me thinking about what if the WBC had existed before 2006. The 1992 USA men's Olympic basketball team, also known as the Dream Team, was absolutely loaded with the NBA's biggest stars, and the team's success on the global stage helped grow the NBA's popularity worldwide. What if there was a World Baseball Classic in 1998 and USA Baseball sent their version of the Dream Team? You may have seen on Instagram, I made concept art for a potential 1998 World Baseball Classic. In this video, I will construct a full roster for what I believe would have been a USA Dream Team in 1998. As you may know, in past WBCs, not all American stars have committed to play, but for the purpose of this video, let's assume every available player was healthy and willing to play in March of 1998. To begin this roster construction, let's first establish some parameters. Previous teams have been able to have 30 players on their roster, 16 position players, and 14 pitchers. This is larger than the roster for an MLB team, largely in an effort to avoid injuries because pitchers are not built up yet, as WBC takes place during spring training. The 16 position players will be made up of the starting nine, two backup catchers, three backup infielders, and two backup outfielders. For the pitchers, there will be five starters and nine relievers, one of which being designated as the team's closer. To pick the players for the team, I will be considering player statistics going into the 1998 season and overall popularity. I'll do my best to avoid using any hindsight, but it is hard to totally avoid its influence. And please remember, this is just my opinion for a made up team in an alternate universe. So, all right, now that I've laid out all the ground rules, let's begin starting with catcher. Entering the 1998 season, the catching position could be considered in somewhat of an offensive golden age, especially compared to what the position has to offer in modern day. However, as for American-born catchers, the pick may be obvious to some. Mike Piazza was in the middle of his prime, coming off his fifth consecutive All-Star selection as well as his fifth consecutive Silver Slugger. He also finished second in the NL MVP race in 1997 after posting a ridiculous 1.070 OPS, which was good for a 185 OPS plus. Piazza hit 362 with 40 homers and 124 RBIs. He also posted a career high 8.7 war. The only reason to think Piazza wouldn't be the starting catcher for Team USA is that he actually represented Team Italy in the 2006 WBC. By 2006, Piazza was past his prime and at age 37, Italy presented an opportunity to be their star, unlike Team USA who went with Jason Veritek and Brian Schneider who were the much younger options at the time. However, in 1998, I believe the Pennsylvania-born Piazza would have chosen to represent Team USA. For the backup catcher spots, we have plenty of options to choose from. World Series champion Charles Johnson was coming off a breakout 1997 season, which saw him get MVP votes. He also provided a plus glove behind the plate as a, the reigning NL Gold Glove winner. Funny enough, Johnson and Piazza would go on to be traded for each other during the 1998 season. Next up, we got Jason Kendall, who was coming off his second season in the bigs and at age 23 was one of the most promising young backstops in baseball. Three other interesting options would have been Todd Hundley, who had 71 home runs between 1996 and 1997, Dan Wilson of the Seattle Mariners, and Brad Ausmus, who would be another plus glove option. Ultimately, however, I have decided to go with Johnson and Kendall, as Johnson would have been a hot pick coming off the World Series, and Kendall, who stole 18 bags in 97, provides a pinch run potential that the other options did not. Moving to first base, this might be the hardest position to pick on the field. The main five candidates I considered are Frank Thomas, Mark McGuire, Jeff Bagwell, Jim Tomei, and Mo Vaughn. Starting with the big hurt, he was coming off a batting title in 97, which saw him hit 347, while also leading the AL in OPS with a 1.067 mark, which was his fifth straight season of one dotting. Along with his 35 homers and 124 RBIs, Thomas was the model of consistency at his position at this point in his career. Mark McGuire had not yet broken Roger Maris' single season home run record, as that occurred during the 98 season, but don't let that make you think he was a slouch. 
McGuire hit 58 homers between Oakland and St. Louis in 97, his second of four straight years with 50 plus homers, along with his 1.039 OPS. Big Mac would have fit very nicely in the middle of our dream team lineup. Jeff Bagwell might have been the most well-rounded option for first base as he was coming off a 97 campaign that saw him hit 43 bombs and steal 31 bases. He was also the best defender out of the group, having won three gold gloves by this point in his career. Jim Tomei has a solid case as well for the spot, although he was still rather new to the position after moving from third base at the start of the 1997 season. Although he was not known for his defense, Tomei was just as much of a threat at the plate as he posted a 1. OPS as well behind his 40 bombs and AL leading 120 walks. Lastly, I considered the 1995 AL MVP Mo Vaughn for the spot as he was a monster at the plate as well. The big lefty mashed to a 980 OPS in 97 with the Red Sox and popped 35 bombs. All could have been suitable options for the first base spot, but I ultimately decided to put McGuire at first while giving Frank Thomas the DH spot. McGuire and Thomas just had too much power and name recognition to pass on. Any pitcher would have been shaking at the idea of facing the two sluggers in the same batting order. I also decided to take Tomei as one of the three infield bench spots. While Bagwell had a very strong argument for the role, I ultimately felt that Tomei being a lefty and having the ability to still play some third base although maybe not so well, made him slightly more versatile as a bench piece. Making our way around the diamond, Craig Biggio is a runaway choice in my opinion for second base. Biggio had won a gold glove and a silver slugger in 97 while posting a slash line of 309, 415, and 501 while also stealing 47 bags. Biggio was one of the best all-around players in the league and he would have been ideal leadoff hitter for this squad. You may be thinking, what about Jeff Kent? Well. While Kent was still a very solid player in 97, hitting 29 bombs and driving in 121, his true breakout as one of the best offensive second basemen of all time hadn't been proven until he backed it up with even better performances from 98 to 2002. I believe at the time Biggio would have been chosen because he was better known as an elite player for the better part of the 90s at this point. I also think Biggio's contact tool contrasts better in this lineup's construction compared to the other mashers up and down. However, I will include Kent as one of the bench infielders on the squad. Over at third, it was another two-horse race, this time between Chipper Jones and Ken Caminiti. Caminiti had won the NL MVP in 96 and backed it up with another strong campaign in 97. However, Chipper had already played in three consecutive World Series with the Braves and was one of the brightest young stars in the game. As both had relatively similar production with Caminiti slashing 290, 389, and 508 compared to Chipper's 295, 371, and 479, and both being switch hitters, I ultimately decided to go with Chipper due to his star power, and if I'm being honest, it was hard to avoid being influenced by the hindsight of the rest of Chipper's Hall of Fame career. Shortstop is an extremely interesting position. Alex Rodriguez was a 21-year-old phenom heading into 1998, as he had already won a batting title in 1996 and made his second All-Star team in 1997. A-Rod would be in competition for the spot with both Barry Larkin and Derek Jeter. Larkin managed to lead all Major League shortstops in OPS in 1997, despite only hitting four home runs the entire season. Larkin made up for his power outage with an on-base of 440. On the other hand, Jeter, who had won the Rookie of the Year in 96 along with his first ring, would have brought the New York spotlight to the Dream Team. Jeter had not quite reached his full potential by 97, but would go on to have an incredible 98 season. I ultimately decided to start A-Rod and add Jeter as the third bench infielder. A-Rod and Jeter would eventually make up the left side of the first ever USA WBC roster in 2006, so it felt right to include both on the 98 Dream Team. One notable option I left off was Nomar Garcia Parra. I believe that Nomar would have opted to play for Mexico rather than battle it out with the competition for playing time on Team USA. If you guys enjoy this video and want to see me break down the rosters for some other teams in the future, leave a like and comment below to let me know. Moving to the outfield, the first two spots may seem obvious. That would be because they are. Barry Bonds is the clear choice for left field. A potentially pre-steroid Barry Bonds was one of the most consistent players the game has ever seen. 1997 was Bonds' sixth of an eventual 14 consecutive seasons with over a 1 dot OPS. Everyone knows that Barry Bonds is one of the greatest baseball players we have ever seen, so I won't bore you with his mind-numbing numbers. 
but just know Bonds was the obvious choice for the Dream Team left fielder. Ken Griffey Jr. was the other clear choice for this outfield, and he will be Manning center. Griffey was coming off the best season of his career in 97, which saw him hit 56 homers, drive in 147 RBIs, and take home the only MVP of his career. Griffey led Team USA with three homers and 10 RBIs in 2006, so we can only imagine what he would have done in his prime. Right field is where the conversation gets a whole lot more interesting. Players that I consider for this spot were David Justice, Tony Gwynn, Albert Bell, and Paul O'Neill. Justice had a massive resurgence in 1997 with Cleveland after an injury-riddled 96 campaign. Justice posted a 1.013 OPS in 97, the highest of his 14-year career. Justice also had been a household name due to playing in the World Series 5 of the previous seven seasons. Tony Gwynn would have provided an element of mature veteran leadership that this juiced up younger team may have needed to actually win a WBC title. Gwynn was still an elite hitter even at age 37, coming off a batting title in 97 when he hit 372. Gwynn was no longer the elite defender he once was, but in an outfield with Bonds and Griffey, he wouldn't have had to cover too much ground, so I don't think that would have been much of an issue. Albert Bell was in one of the greatest offensive stretches we have ever seen from 1993 to 97. Bell had the only 50 homer 50 double season ever in 1995 and followed it up with another 78 homers between 96 and 97. As for Paul O'Neill, the Yankee right fielder had hit over 305 straight seasons while having consistent 20 homer pop throughout the 90s. Ultimately, I chose Tony Gwynn for the starting spot, mainly due to the fact that he is another left-handed bat that can hit for plus contact to differentiate the lineup in the same way, if not significantly better, than Biggio. I decided to give the two outfield bench spots to Bell and Justice, as they both can be used as dangerous pinch hitters from both sides of the plate or given starting spots without seeing any dip in production. When it comes to a potential starting rotation for this squad, there is definitely no lack of talent. The top three would easily be Roger Clemens, Greg Maddox, and Randy Johnson. Almost undoubtedly the three best pitchers of the decade. The trio combined to win 17 Cy Young Awards, one of which Clemens was coming off of heading into 98. Clemens accumulated a 10.7 war, to, according to Fangraphs, in 97 and led the AL with 292 strikeouts. Over in Seattle, Randy Johnson was just as dominant in 97 as he won 20 and 4 with a 2.28 ERA and 291 strikeouts. As for Maddox, he was his usual steady self, going 19 and 4 with a 2.20 ERA. If you were trying to construct the greatest rotation of all time, there is a good chance all three would be included, so it's safe to say this rotation is absolutely loaded. To fill out the final two spots, I decided to go with Kurt Schilling and Andy Pettit. While Kevin Brown was coming off an incredible 1997 season, which saw him pitch the Marlins to a title, and John Smoltz and Mike Messina were also available, I ultimately went with Schilling and Pettit due to them both coming off elite 1997 seasons and their equal reputation as big game pitchers. It also allows the rotation to be balanced with three righties and two lefties. There's definitely an argument for several other options, but I had to cut it down to five somehow, so this is what I went with. As for the bullpen, I basically just took the nine best American closers from 97 rather than give you guys each of their individual stats. I think it's better to just list them out. So the Dream Team's bullpen is as follows. Jeff Shaw from the Cincinnati Reds, Billy Wagner from the Houston Astros, Mark Wollers from the Atlanta Braves, Rod Beck from the San Francisco Giants, John Franco from the New York Mets, Rob Nen from the Florida Marlins, Dennis Eckersley from St. Louis, Randy Myers from Baltimore, and lastly, Trevor Hoffman of the San Diego Padres would be the closer. So that is my full roster for a potential 1998 World Baseball Classic USA Dream Team. What do you think? Did I miss anyone? Would you have changed anything? Do you want to see more videos like this in the future? I am personally very excited for this year's WBC, especially due to the fact that current stars like Mike Trout and Mookie Betts have committed to play. Who will you be rooting for in this WBC? Check out the full 98 WBC project over on my Instagram at m6coldesigns. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.